Today we have a very special guest, Dr. Al Kuhn. See how you doing today? Yeah, what's going on, brother? Right. Another day in paradise. Um, thank you so much for coming down here. And Dr. Kuhn is a dentist uh, from the DC area. I have to say, I wasn't gonna say you are uh, you know, our favorite dentist or oral specialist uh, in the company. We do, I'd say most of our um, clients who are in the oral specialty are some of the most fun people um, in, in the company. So I have to shout out Dr. Edinger, and he's gonna love that. He's a cool guy, loves watches, and uh, he loves to make smiles pretty, just like are you. <laughs> You know, that's a common thing, man. A lot of dentists, uh, they love watches. There's a, um, there's a desire for man-made perfection in dentistry. You know, uh, you know, someone loses a tooth that's, that's God-made and, you, and you're trying to get it as close as possible. Uh, and so, yeah, they, that's a big, big commonality. Oh man, you know, I, I, I never dentists. thought about it. Like oh yeah, that. absolutely. Always striving for perfection, right? and that is kind of what watches are in a nutshell. Exactly, exactly. Man. So, so what? Uh, let's start with it. What got you into watches? What gave you the bug? What was your first thing? Oh man, I, I I have loved watches since I was seven years old. I mean, I've always I've always had something on the wrist. I mean, from uh, Mickey Mouse, I used to take my dad's old Seikos. Uh, so yeah, it, watches have just been something that that I've always loved. Um, I didn't really start getting into like high end horology. Um, until I took my boards in dental school and my friend gave me a uh, Rolex GMT 2001 with the steel bezel. Oh wow, that's a nice uh, friend. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah <laughs> I, I flew down, well, I, there's a backside too. He, he gave me to it for taking boards uh, and I hadn't even passed boards. So, <laughs> so he just, he was just so excited I made it that far. That's awesome. And we're on the way back to the airport and uh, you know, he, he reaches down and goes, oh, here. And he just kind of hands it to no me. It was, it was in the side, you know, yeah. like in the car. This is the pocket. Yeah, right next to it. Um, uh, and now, he was his, his parent was a big, his dad was a big collector, had tons of watches. So uh, this wasn't like a, a big deal for, to him. But for me, it was it, it was amazing. And from there, it took off. Wow. Uh, you know, when you walk into like a store with a, a Rolex GMT, there's a certain level of of clout that they'll give you, so I was just privy to more conversations. They would, they would be interested. It, it is the, the the silent card, right? If you oh, have yeah. a nice watch on, if, especially in, you know a nice Rolex, depending on where you are, it does kind of. It, it takes away a little bit of a, a layer of you know the kind of back and forth, and you get straight into mm -hmm. a, a different level of education, and access to information. Yeah. So that, that's awesome. It also makes it more organic, right? It's yeah. like, oh, you have this. Oh, yes, I do have this, and instantly, you know, you'll talk about what I had before, how did I get it, what I want in the future, and so uh, I love it because you know, wearing a watch, it just creates an organic conversation. So it, anyway, that, but from there. Uh, it, it did take off. Uh, it wasn't until much, much later that I was able to buy uh, my first nice watch. Um, we talked about it before. I was in St. Yeah. Lucia, uh, still broke. You know, I think <laughs> I just gotten out of school, and uh, uh, I went to I went to Rolex. The price was too expensive, <laughs> and then I went to a Tag Heuer boutique. And still too expensive, but the woman said, "Well, you can open up a credit card." So, hey, hey, one thing in the yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> suggest anybody do that. That was a, a horrible thing that I did. But if anybody did it, there's no way I could judge you for it. Uh, but that was how I got my first tag with Carrera, oh, awesome. uh, and I loved it. Um, uh, my, it was funny because my wife on the way down, I bought a Swiss watch for like five hundred dollars. Yeah. She was like, "You promised you wouldn't buy a watch." I said, "You know what? <laughs> You're right." So, you know, coming back with this tag, I had to fly home. So I called, I said, you know what? I, you know, God told me to give that watch away. Ooh, and she was like, that's really sweet of you. I was like, yeah. So, you know, I gave it away to my friend. She goes, okay. And I was like, and then God blessed me with another watch. <laughs> so instantly <laughs> she was, she was uh, you know, hey, as, as, come, mad, right? <laughs> as mad as you can get about buying a watch. Yeah. Um, uh, and so that was, that was like my first nice piece. And I wore it all the time. Uh, and then it wasn't until 2013 that I got uh, my first Rolex. It was like a Rolex mill gas. I split it up amongst three credit cards uh, and, and uh, you know, eventually paid that off. Again, I don't recommend that, but hey, we you know, we gotta do. it's all the good as mistakes, you know? Um, and then from there, just save a little bit, put a little bit on a watch, sell a watch, collect a watch. So uh, I was in the pre-owned market for a long time before mm -hmm. I actually bought like a new watch before, so. All right, that's yeah. awesome. So one of the real cool things that, you know, when I, uh, you, one of us follow each other on Instagram way back, yeah. but what um, attracted me to your page was, was uh, your, your son. And you'd always, you know, have pictures of your son buying watches with you. So tell me a little bit about just the fun you have going with your family buying watches. Oh, so to, to even start with the relationship with my son, it has to go with the relationship with my dad. Uh, growing up, my dad took us everywhere and, and we did everything with him. So, 
you know, if it snowed outside, you know, he, we were out shoveling snow. Yeah. If it was mulch outside, we were moving mulch. Uh, if you want to go to the movies, it took us to the movies. It wasn't until later we realized that, like, you know, at seven years old, you should be seeing rated R movies. But, like, yeah. <laughs> for him, it was about clocking in quality time. So um, that was just instilled, like, no matter what. I mean, even work. Like, if, you know, we didn't have somebody to watch us, we were at work with my yeah. dad. And so um, I always kind of appreciated that that quality time. And... Uh, when I had my son, I was I was really nervous. I was like, look, how do I be a good dad? He's like, I don't know, just just be with them all the time. He's like, hey. that's what I did, and you kids turned out fine. Um, and so that was my goal, is to just kind of spend time. Uh, it wasn't until he really started falling, like my son started loving the watches, that I really just kind of just became this thing uh, where like every Friday we'd go to the watch store yeah, look I at love watches, to see it. and yeah, yeah, so it is. It is a big thing, and then it just kind of took off from there. I mean, he has other hobbies or two, but that's like something special uh, that we have. Um, so yeah, it's it's, so, it's one of the best parts of the weekend. Yeah, the, the, to be honest, like I, I love just watching your IG stories when you guys go shopping. It, it's so fun, and yeah. then see you working out with your dad sometimes, and you know, Forza Ali, he's out there doing some things. So I, I want you to tell me about you got something special for your dad. Um, mm. I think last year. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, I, I got him a Rolex Cellini Moon Phase. Um, so it came out in 2017, and I remember him just staring at it. Yeah. Um, and I had I, I had worked really hard to get him like a Daytona, which he fell in. I mean, he loved it. You know, he didn't know anything about Rolex, but then when he saw that watch, it was like you all you know the feeling. The first time you look at something, you're like, man, yeah. I love this. I'll never be able to have this. And um, I, I I just watched him love it. And every time I take him to the store, he'd be like, what's what's that watch? The one that has the little blue thing in it. And uh, you know, I knew what he's talking it. about. Uh. And so uh, his birthday, I kind of pretended like I didn't get him anything. Uh, and this was 2019. Um, so his birthday, I kind of just pretended I didn't get anything. And one day I was like, hey, I got to go to the store um, to, to look at something. So we're looking at it and they have it out right there in the case. And he's, he's staring at it. He's like, man, let me see. He goes, he's looking oh, at it. I'm looking at him. I'm like, you like it? He's like, yeah, man. I, <sighs> one day. And he goes to put it back. And I look, I look at my, my buddy who worked the store and I was like, can you box it up? And just his whole, like everything, oh, just his man. eyes went big. I mean, you know the, you yeah, know that just feeling. It's just like everything, everything was there, and uh, I was happy. It was his dream watch, um, and, and and for the first time, I was able to buy my dad his dream something. Man, and special. and as as a as a son, that's that's an amazing feeling. I mean, it's not very often you get to do that. Most of the time, your parents are are doing that in the reverse. Um, he holds a special place in my heart because he sacrificed so much for the family. Exactly. Um, you know, my mother's a physician, so uh, they were married when she was in school. So she took care of her until, you know, she got off the ground. We were born, made sure he took care of us. Uh, he was always last in terms of taking care of himself. Yeah. So uh, it, it was... Yeah, it was, it was the highlight. We still talk about it. Uh, he still talks about it. He fell asleep with it on. I remember, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, that's the real test. Exactly. Right? <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like in the bed, fully dressed, with the watch on, and my wife comes and she puts the covers over him, and and he goes, no, no, no I'm gonna wear the watch. Yeah. She's like, ain't nobody talking about your watch. Yes. <laughs> no, don't come for the watch. Exactly. So I mean, it was it was amazing, and he still wears it to this yeah. day. Uh, the strap is disgusting at this hey, point because it, it, it happens, just sweat right? out. You know, and, but, <laughs> Yeah, no, he absolutely loves it. I mean, since the, I would say the last what eight years, it's been, uh, you know, I want to steal Rolex or I want. The, I mean, there's like five watches that everybody wants, um, but I think you know, there's a small section that keeps breaking off and saying, you know what, I, I can get just as much joy from a longa. I can get just as much joy as uh, obviously F. P. Jean or any of these other brands. And so, uh, I, I think it's getting back to that. Uh, I, I look forward to the day where you have the store with all the independent brands and you're in there. Yes. You're in there, you're hanging out, you're meeting people, you know the owner. And, and granted, I mean, I love Rolex. I obviously love Patek, yeah. but um, there's just, there's so much that's out there and, and you have to experiment. You have to try it on. Exactly. Like you can't just, you know, we've gotten so used to like, you look on the phone, you try, oh, I like that. You try it on, you get it, and then it's massive or it's too small. So um, I look forward to that, man. I think that's the cool thing about watch meetups, yeah. right? Because I mean, everybody, you just have this this smorgasbord <laughs> of like watches all over the place. And you're just picking it up and trying it on, and, and, and sometimes you'll try a watch on. But like, man, I've been trying to want that for years. You put it on, you say, "Oh, not for me." Yep. You put it down. Um, Happens all the time. The 5960. I did not like this watch when it first came out. It was. Uh, I was like, okay, this bracelet reminds me too much of a Bretlin. Um, you know, there's certain aspects of it I like. 
And then I looked at it more and more and more, and I was like, it is the perfect combination of new watch, vintage look. Exactly. Um, when I first bought it, I was nervous. I put it on the strap. Because I was like, okay, I know on the strap, at least I like it. And then the more and more, I was like, yeah, let me try that bracelet on. And then I went to the watch, so I had him put it on the bracelet, and I never looked back. And this is like one of my favorite ones to wear now. Uh, and I wouldn't have known that without trying it out. It, it, and know, the, I would have never the, known In that. the beginning of this watch's career, it was very much that. It was a very polarizing watch. When mm. these came out, not everybody knew what it was because you think 5960, you know, you, a little mm. bit classy watch, you're not thinking bracelet. That bracelet is probably one of the best bracelets made. You know, Patek uses it across all their watches. Mm. But when it came out, the reception was very, very soft because people didn't get to see it. But as people actually tried them on, they got out into the wild, the pre-owned market picked up on them. Now those are watch people, you know, chase after. So it is one of those things where you, you shouldn't be afraid to experiment. There are many people who experimented on that watch and got a good deal in the beginning on the pre-owned market. And now we're in a very good space just because they wanted to experiment and see if something works. So you, you should never be afraid to experiment or have some fun. Tell me a little bit about that, that hope there. Oh, <laughs> this... So, you know, it's funny, uh, almost everything in this collection is, is replaceable, right? Not that it wouldn't be hard to replace it, except for the Hulk. So, um, my, uh, we had our baby at GW Hospital. GW Hospital is in Northwest DC, probably about maybe a mile from uh, the store I bought this from. So, um, I, uh, my wife's in labor for 36 hours. It is taking forever to have this child, and he's massive. He's like a week late. Uh, and and we had she had to get induced because he kept growing in the belly, wow. um, and so uh, you know at like hour twenty four I was like I need a break I, I know you need a break I need a break so I go I walk I walk to the watch store, I go inside <laughs> this is my first time ever like in this place, um, and uh, they're asking me oh well, what are you doing at the time I had a um, Daytona Everose on. You know, so, mm -hmm. I, and I was wearing gym clothes because I've been in the hospital for two days. Yeah. So that kind of juxtaposition of like gym clothes with this watch on, they were like, okay, you know, th this you guy's obviously talk. interested yeah. in watches. So it kind of allowed me a little more leeway. The guy says, so, so what are you doing here? And I was like, well, my wife's in labor. It's taking forever. Uh, and I've been looking for this thing for months, but I want to buy a sub a birth year sub for my son. And uh, apparently he's massive. So I want to get a Hulk, you know, I yeah. want to get a Hulk it's to just kind of represent it. And he was like, okay, well, when does your wife do? I was like, oh, well, now, like she's in labor. And they were like, wait, your wife's in labor at the hospital now? I was like, don't worry, she's good. She has her phone. And, <laughs> and so he goes, I happen to have one in the back. And this was 2017. It wasn't quite yet impossible, but it was getting harder. Like it wasn't any wait list anymore. For but it. yeah, it was getting to that point. It was like right on that cusp. And so he's like, well, I have one. And I said, okay, well, if my son's born, I'm gonna come back and buy this. So I was like, let me run back to the hospital. All right, so now I want my son to be born yeah, quickly. Yeah, like, <laughs> just, time to go. Exactly, like, come on, man, you gotta hurry up. So uh, she's not born until two o'clock in the morning. Um, I let the store know like, hey, thank you so much. My son was born, he's healthy. Um, I know the Hulk is sold, but you know, I, I just want to thank you for even entertaining yeah. it. He calls me back a week later, he's like, I got one, you know, I got one. So. Uh, I canceled the day at the office, which I never do. Like, I mean, I, I would be in there like with the flu and I'm like, all right, guys, yeah, let's, you're let's always go. Working. You worked rock. before, you came here today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I had surgery this morning. So, um, uh, and so I canceled the whole day. I, um, I I pick up my son, I grab my wife and, and we head to the store and uh, I, I'm holding him the whole time. And and I was like, this is, this is his watch. And he's dead asleep, you know, he's maybe like a week old. And there's this photo that, uh, the gentleman at the watch store took my good friend Roberto, and uh, it's me holding my son yep. sleeping with the Hulk. And uh, to me, it represents everything that I love about watches. You know, watches, it's funny, for something that we chased after and sought after, the actual watch really has little to do with our passion for it. You know, like we love looking at it, but it's the conversing, the camaraderie, yep. the connection. Um, you know, we're gonna leave this earth. I'm gonna leave this earth at some point, but something lives on with this watch. You know, my, my son hopefully one day will pass it down. He's like, this is the watch that my father gave me. Exactly. You know, and uh, that he got while you know I was coming out. Yeah, coming in labor, <laughs> and he's gonna tell that story, and he's gonna be like, this guy did this, yeah. and 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 it's just. I mean, that's the best part of it. You know, the best part of collecting the friends you meet, the stories you tell, 
uh, the camaraderie that you build. Uh, you know, Instagram is a gift and a curse because it, it brings about so many things like this, which I absolutely love. Yep. It also makes you think everybody has a Nautilus, which I, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not true. No. Um, but yeah, so this this is actually the only watch in my entire collection that is, is irreplaceable, which looking at it, you would think, no, this is the first one to go. Uh, this is the only one that's going to stay. And, and I absolutely love this. Uh, I wear this uh, pretty much anytime I travel, anytime I do work, uh, community service trips, surgery out of the country, uh, this is on the wrist. This is, you know, I want this to have a full life uh, so that when I pass it down, carnival, I mean, yeah, I wear exactly. this at FX, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm jumping, I mean, this jump has gotten paid. I've had to scrub paint off this yeah, watch. Hey, that's good. Um, and my son is going to have stories like with this one. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the day I pass it down uh, to him. Yeah. Uh, that's an amazing story. Yeah. You know, so the, the first thing that's going to happen is you going to have 20 people, you know, pretend at Rolex 80s that their, you know, wife is in labor to get watches. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's going to be a new trend all over. But that's amazing. And that's yeah. such a special thing. And it's just, that that's really what I love about how you collect is I guess you have yeah. very nice watches and but the, the way you collect with your family, mm. such a special thing like that. And you can imagine that Rolex dealer at that time when like the hoax are going, who's secret shopping you, all these things in your mind. And somebody comes in and the wife is in labor and you're like, hey, I'm going to get this guy Hulk. Yeah. You know, because it's like, it's and so that's, special. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, I know this Hulk will live with you and live with the Coons family forever, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think on the, like on the dealer side, the fact that you guys get to experience that, you know, so many times, it has to be an amazing feeling. You know, I, I, I talk a lot about like finishing cases. Like when you finish a full reconstruction case, that feeling when they first get up and they smile and they look and you just feel this like thing that comes over them. And, and it's one of those things like anything else, that's at the peak. It's going to fade from there. I mean, yeah. you know, five years from now, you, you'll take advantage, you know, you'll just take for granted the fact that you just you got these brand it, yeah. new teeth. But like you get to catch it at the height, the height of the joy where the eyes get big. It's almost like a little bit teary eyed. You, you, you get emotional. You think about you'll never get to this point and it's just here. And, and you guys see that every yeah. day. I mean, granted, 2020 has probably been via it, over it, the phone. It's a little different. But, but yeah. um, you're, you're right. Because what mm. really, you know, I, I randomly ended up selling watches. Mm. But what kept me in this industry is, uh, you know, someone in the Caribbean on cruise ships, you're dealing with families all day and couples and seeing things like that. Seeing yeah. somebody buying a watch, you know, buying a Nautilus, looking at his little baby like, hey, this this is for you one day. I, yeah. I put people's infants' names on the paddock papers. You know what I mean? That's like, amazing. hey, yeah. this isn't mine. This is for my son. Yeah. And uh, things like that, it really is what made me stay in the industry. Of course, I love watches. I'm a watch nerd and I watch YouTube videos all night. Yeah. But just the community, the passion, and just the, the love, honestly, that is in the watch community is something that's... Because not many things you get to take with you to a fet, to work, to, you know, your, your charity stuff to wherever you want to be, but you can still give it to your son and he can still have an entire life with it as well and so on and so forth. And that's the beauty about watch, especially today, is that they will last forever. Maybe a new strap or a new bracelet, but he'll always be able to say that, hey, you know, when I was when I was being bored, my dad snuck out to the Rolex dealer. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And no shame. No, no shame. shame. Hey, no, no, shame no, no I love that. Please. <laughs> no shame at all. No shame in it at all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You know, talking about just kind of going into legacy, there's something I did want to share uh, and, and this might look different than kind of any other watch in my collection, but uh, sure. next, almost similar to this, this is irreplaceable. I almost never wear this. This is the second time I brought this out of the house. Wow. Uh, one time I wore it outside, I looked at it, I said, this is not the weather for this watch. And I, I brought it back inside. Uh, this is my grandfather's Waltham from 1940, somewhere in between 1920 and 1940. Um, they don't have the exact year. Uh, I don't. I don't have much of my grandfather. My grandfather actually passed away uh, like a week before meeting me. Oh, wow. um, he was a very. Uh, he was a good time guy. I mean, you know, from Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, he was a merchant marine. Oh, wow. Uh, was all about just like having a good time. Yeah. So uh, it was funny because he would come here with my grandmother. You know, play dad for a week, go back to Jamaica. Might play dad for a week down there. You know, true. <laughs> you know, true rude boy fashion. Yeah. Just like just out there doing whatever he wants. And um, and so we don't have much from him. There's there's three things that we have. Uh, one is our ring. It's a rose gold ring uh, that we only bring out for special occasions. The last time I wore it was my son's christening. Oh, wow. um, and uh, we have a plaque from uh, the, the North Pole. And it's like a gag plaque. 
but we put it in this really nice frame because we don't have much. Yeah. And it's like, you know, here's Albert Coombs, went to the North Pole, <laughs> you know, first of his name. It's all this like gibberish. Yeah. There's a walrus on it uh, biting in a sandwich. And it's just, <laughs> it's silly, but it hangs up in our house. And people yeah, look I, at it and say, oh, this thing is majestic. Yeah, and I said, no, this thing's a joke. <laughs> this is just all we have. <laughs> Um, and then the third thing is, th is this watch. And so, um, uh, you know, I, I, it's one of those things I absolutely love. I, sometimes I literally will put it on and just wear it around the house just yeah. to kind of feel for it. And then I put it back up. Um, uh, this, when this does go to my son, this will be uh, like the fourth generation it passes to. Uh, my son's name is Albert the Fourth. Uh, so uh, he is literally getting this passed down to him. So I, I absolutely love this. Like these two, they'll be there forever. The, the keepers. And yeah. th this watch is so amazing. When you send me pictures, mm. it was beautiful. But to see it in person, um, it's so so unique. The numerals that are on it, uh, just a nice, beautiful, well-sized watch for the time period as well. It's probably a larger mm. watch for back then. So I and still mm. works good. So has a great mm. wine. Just took it down to the watchmaker, mm. um, and it still you know it still has a good amplitude. All, all original too. Everything never a dial change. Change, never wow. anything. It's never even been maintenance before. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't really think my grandfather realized what he had. And, and you know, I, I was kind of you know joking about it earlier. But you know, for someone who doesn't have much, you give what you have. Yeah. So, um, and this this means the world, and it becomes a staple in the family. So, uh, you know, for Albert Kuhn Senior, this is. Is, he'd be proud to see his grandson wearing it. Oh, you know? yeah. oh I can't so, wait to see him wear it as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And not, hopefully not destroyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, I think he'd be good. Uh, all right, so tell me about this Aquanaut you got there. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, this watch kind of came more popular with uh, the John Mayer Hodunk, yes. which I absolutely love this story about. It. He kind of compared it to the, the Chuck Taylor of the <laughs> tech. Uh, I, I love that analogy. Um, uh, but this watch is is actually special to me. This is probably my the watch you'll most likely see on my wrist. Um, when I had just got out of dental school, which was like 2011, um, this had just come out. Um, and I was able to see it for the first time. And uh, I looked at it. I, I, I really fell in love with it. And I think at the time, it was not even near uh, no. as hot as it is it, now. It, 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 no, not at all. In 2011, that would probably have stayed in a showcase for a little bit. It's crazy to think. I yes. was looking at it. I was actually looking at it at a used watch store, uh, and I think it was like thirty percent off. Yeah. Um, and and I didn't have a penny to my name out of dental school. I mean, I was I was dead broke. Uh, I used to walk. I, I had to walk to the grocery store, like yeah. you know, it, like with luggage. <laughs> yeah, because it was. I didn't want. I had to save the two dollars for the train. So. Yeah, adds up. Um, when I put this on my my wrist, I was like, man, you know. Like, I'm going to save up one day. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to get it. This is perfect. Uh, it, it just spoke to me a lot. The kind of the classy look, but just the, the juxtaposition with this like rubber strap. It's, it's, you know, everything that I loved about being refined and rugged. Uh, and so kind of each year I started kind of saving little by little. Uh, and then out of nowhere, it just became impossible to get. It, yeah. it became absolutely impossible to get uh, to the point where I would just get laughed out of stores. Um, every time I, I, you know, I go in and ask about it. Um, so anyway, I started kind of collecting, you know, little by little. I started with kind of Rolex, a couple of the Rolexes here and there. Uh, I was actually lucky enough to get a 5167, oh, nice. uh, uh, you know, used and, you know, not for a bad price, uh, but still like this was the Shout watch. Yeah. So, uh, you know, funny story it was the day before Thanksgiving, um, I had just gotten my dad that watch. So yes. it was like a really an emotional day for him and he, and, and he loved it. Um, and uh, that night at 11 p.m., uh, I get a text. Uh, and, and so and for new collectors, uh, you know, there's this call that you get that you <laughs> wait for sometimes for five years, sometimes for six yeah, months. It's you, this you don't know when. <laughs> yeah, you never know when it is like, you know, it is like just in the night you might get this call. Um, and, and it's the best feeling in the world. It's like you see the text from from the AD or whoever you buy your watches from. And it's like you got it. You know, you got it. It's here whenever you're ready. And you instantly want to drop what you're doing. Yeah, like midnight, and, and let's the, go. Yeah, Open let's go. Let's handle this. You know, let's do this over the phone. Um, and uh, the the one of my really good friends was able to buy it from, um, he, he gave me that call like 11 p.m. And he knew the story. He knew how much I loved this watch. He knew I felt like I would never be able to have it. So uh, Black Friday on Thanksgiving, we literally, like Wednesday, my dad got his watch. Black Friday, me and my son, uh, we literally went around, like, I, I went, I sold the 5167, uh, and, and, you know, that day I sold it, literally walked over, 
Uh, there's a really video where I was like, son, you want to get a watch today? He's like, yeah. I was like, what color watch? He was like, I want a black watch. Yeah. <laughs> so we went to the Swatch store. We got him a black diver. Yes. And then I went and I picked this up. Um, you and cut the plastic, right? Your son, So right? my son broke the seal. Oh. He broke the seal on my dream watch. Um, and, That's insane. And, and, and so it's, it's amazing for me. It was more emotional for me than it probably was for him, but it was just this, this feeling that I, I, I never thought I'd be able to have. Um, and, and my son not having any idea what it is. Yeah, just and living just, life. And just knowing hey, one that, day yeah. he will. One day he'll watch that video and it'll mean the world to him that it, he's it, there. Exactly, you know? exactly. So um, this, is, this is special, but this one is, is for me. You know, I mean, you have my son, my grandfather. This one is is, is the one that, yeah, uh, I'll, I, I could wear it every day. I could wear it with everything. It, it is one of the yeah. most comfortable watches oh, out there. Amazing. Nobody talks about it, but the, the tropical composite strap on Aquanauts, it just, oh, once it's size, it disappears on your wrist. Yeah, you can wear it to do anything. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Well said, man, well said. And then the, the, the GMT function is just absolutely amazing. So, um, but yeah, no, this is, uh, hey, this is, this is a special. Oh, yeah, this, this awesome. is for me. This is for me. So about a year ago, you came with a really great idea. We were following each other on Instagram. I was in Dubai, and you were like, you know, let's let's start um, a Black Watch Collectors Club. Tell the people a little bit more about what we did. Well, I, you know, one of the things I've noticed as we collected that they were just kind of spurs black collectors throughout, um, and we just all kind of had this like unique camaraderie around there. And um, you know, one of the things we had talked about is like a space where we have. Uh, collectors who look like us. I mean, that's not something that's often seen in, in advertisements or any of these things. And so, um, uh, you know, we had talked about it. I brought, I brought yeah. the idea to you. Um, and we kind of just put like a skeletal thing together. Um, and, and, and the two things that I really wanted is I wanted a safe space for uh, collectors to come, regardless of what level that you're at. I didn't want somebody, I didn't want any pretentiousness. I didn't want people to feel that I'm not good enough to get into this club. Uh, I wanted people who had a love of watches, had an interest in watches, but maybe was intimidated by the field, either just the brands themselves or no one looking like them having a place to go. Um, and then I wanted to have a place to, to celebrate people's uh, accomplishments. Yeah. I mean, one of the weird things about this is that, you know, you get a watch, right? I mean, you get your first watch, your wife is happy for yeah. you, or your friends. Are, you get your third watch, people are like, all right, cool. Yeah, exactly. You got a, a black watch, <laughs> yeah. you know? So, I mean, you get a circle of people who, who understand the passion that you're feeling. Um, and I, I think just to create that bond between, uh, between people is amazing, it's needed. And there wasn't a space like that, uh, either in person or virtually. Um, the common thing that I've been hearing is that I'm so glad there's a space for this yeah. and I haven't seen anything like this before. Um, and so I, I hope we continue to, to grow and I hope people you know, continue to reach out. Um, if somebody responds, it's either you or I responding right yeah. away. Um, and which is cool and it's been unique. I've learned about brands. I've, uh, I've kind of educated people about things that they may or may not have known. That, that, that's been interesting. It's been yeah. a very educational space. Oh, yeah. And like people, you know, we have members who have, you know, Seiko Fives up to Richard Mills and members who are in Japan, New York, mm. or, or all over the globe. You know, people never found a community like that before, which we, we tried and we looked. But the education aspect of it, and everybody just coming like, hey, what do you think about this? Hey, mm. I was in the store looking at this. I think somebody got a, a Tudor Booker um, and asked uh, your, your advice for it and just helping people through that has been like amazing to see just how open everybody is just to share information exactly and, and like i said there's no everybody's friendly i mean it, it is it is almost a brother and sisterhood that's in there uh, instantly once you get into the chat instantly once you come and uh shout out to uh calvin jong ping who joined the page yeah. early man yeah, but first. uh he was like he was like maybe the third follower yeah. and he was like i'm in <laughs> yeah. you know he just and i was like okay and yeah, then instantly started yeah. sending <laughs> sending pictures uh you know it was, it was funny because uh, i told him i was like well hey send a picture of your watches and and, and we'll post them and the first watch he posts is the RM, and he was like, uh, you know, is this watch okay? Yeah. I was like, yes, Calvin. Yeah, it's a nice one, too. <laughs> this one will work. Yeah. <laughs> you got to put that, yeah. that, uh, that wrist shot up there. <laughs> exactly, exactly, man. Uh, and, and then since then, even with, you know, we talk about everything outside of watches. We've talked about our kids. It's, it's about the support. It's about the camaraderie. We've said it before. The actual watch, the, the, the nuts and bolts, is only a small percentage of why we do it. It's the brotherhood, the camaraderie, the stories, the legacy, the family, uh, everything that comes with this device uh, that gives you this vehicle to get access to these things. I mean, that's what it's about. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, so the name of the group is uh, CP Time. Mm -hmm. CP stands for Culture Perspective, and basically, it's um, looking at the watch industry to you know the 
the perspective of our culture and the black culture. Um, it's available for anybody. Anybody could join. All we ask is that you love watches. Um, and then you can join and have some fun, send us your wrist shot. We'll be doing a lot of virtual meetups uh, in the meantime. And when things get normal, maybe we go to Japan and have, you know, go support Calvin out there or yeah, something. Yeah, absolutely. And some absolutely, physical things. Man. And also to just, yeah, just supporting. I mean, I've loved I love connecting with dealers. I love connecting with, I mean, just different people, uh, uh, different companies that have done brandings. Um, there's a marketing company that was like, hey man, we want to help you guys market. I mean, it's it's about it's about the camaraderie. It's about the support. Uh, it's about the love of watches. Um, so, yeah. All right, now before we wrap up, it is Black History Month. So I did find a really cool quote from Malcolm X that I, Malcolm X that I wanted to share before um, we let go. And I, what I found was interesting is when um, Malcolm X um, converted, you know, to, to Islam. One of the only things that really he put value towards was his timepiece. Mm -hmm. was his timepiece and, and some other things, but not many things that he put, you know, really ultra value with on his timepiece. We have been many people have tried to figure out what it is, and if, if you have found out what that timepiece is, um, that'd be great to let us know. You but, can win a free hat, by yeah, the way. Hey, we you, we, you we win, have hat prizes that are awesome. You win two free hats because, <laughs> because I, you know, don't make me stay up all night looking. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh no, it, it was a, a really interesting piece on a Spidel bracelet. We put a picture up on it, but every mm. uh, picture of Michael Max with a watch on that can be seen, he has the same watch on. And I'm gonna share this quote. I have less patience with someone who doesn't wear a watch than with anyone else. For this, this type is not time conscious. In all our deeds, the proper value and respect for time determines success or, or failure. I, I thought that was just such an amazing quote and it really, as much as fun and passion you have a watch, it, it does come down to the end of the day, you know, being timely, being on time. And it's something that, um, you know, that little bit of dis discipline can like take you everywhere. So I just thought that's a great quote. And that's definitely going to be um, if we when we get the school built, this will mm. be somewhere there. I, I actually love that idea as, as a quote when you get the school built. Before we go. Mm -hmm. You know, we have two watches here. I want to talk a little bit about Future Grills. I know um, uh, the watch that we talked about the most probably is Elegante you've been looking at. Yes. You know, so uh, I just wanted to, what, what made you want to jump towards that watch? Why is that one of your Future Grills? Uh, so um, I'm having a daughter. And, and uh, Congrats, one man. of the, thank you. And so one of the things that uh, I've noticed with the watches is that I don't have any safe queens. I wear them. I, I beat them up. Um, the, the people who sell me these watches, they cry when they see them. Years <laughs> later. They're like, why did you do this? And it's because this is how they're meant to be. Um, I wanted to something different, something unique, something cool, uh, uh, light, something that I can just be active with. Um, but also, you know, something that if I pass down to my girl, she's like, oh, I remember, I remember dad got this right before I was born. I love and that. this is nothing that he's ever had before. Um, I, I've never had a daughter before. I have no idea what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, I'm just gonna hold her the whole time till she's 40 and just yeah, say right. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but that's kind of you know kind of what had me thinking along the lines. Um, I, I did want a different material, something light like titanium. So that's why I've been eyeing the Elegante. I also looked at like the the AP titanium. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of other titaniums, but they were kind of in the stratosphere of yeah, yeah, things be, that I'm, I'm, not, I'm not there yet. Um, so, uh, but yeah, that, that was kind of the cause of it. Something new, something different, because, you know, I'm pretty sure my life's about to change. With my yeah. son, not much change, you know? We just, I mean, you know, he just, he's born, and I was yeah, like, all right, well, man, come on, right? let's go. Yeah, once yeah. a baby grows, it's a whole different world. Right? I know, I know. You can't really, like, you know, discipline it is different. Yeah, like, I'm not, I'm no. just not going to discipline. Oh, when she gets a little older, then they start teaming up on you, Oh, too. yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, called. absolutely, yeah. So, I, um... Uh, but at the end, it's, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm, I'm very, very oh, excited man. for the next challenge. Oh, I'm so. excited for you. Yeah. Well, Al, thank you so much for driving down. This mm -hmm. has been amazing. Um, Dr. Dr. Al Combs. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother.